In today's episode, we're creating an adorable, easy to make envelope journal, perfect for beginners. This journal features a no sew binding, plus it's a design team project for the Digital Collage Club. Whether you're a journaling pro or just getting started, it has something for everyone. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. I do want to mention this project was inspired by Susie Shabby Soul. And I will link her video below in this one for your reference as well. She has made such a cute little envelope booklet. So we're starting off with six plain envelopes. They are all the same size. These are the measurements in case you need them. But I would say use whatever envelopes you have. It doesn't matter what kind of flap they have. We're going to glue all the flaps shut. So that will be step number one. I'm just using a glue stick. So I'll do that for all six of them. And then the next step is to fold them all in half so that the flap side is on the outside. So we do this step for all six envelopes. So we have them all glued and folded. And one of these is going to be cut in half, which is going to be our cover envelope. This next step is optional, but I want to ink up my edges using walnut stain and a makeup brush. Alternatively, you could coffee dye your envelopes or just leave them as they are since we will only be seeing a narrow border at the end. And I'm going to do this front and back, even though we'll be gluing the envelopes together and we won't see a lot of the backs, but, but I'm going to be adding pockets and I want the inside of the pocket to have the distressing as well. So I'm just going to go around all my edges like this. So I have inked up all of my edges. This is the envelope that we have cut in half, which is going to go on the front and the back. And now we're just going to glue these envelopes together. So this is the half envelope. This is the first of the five that we have folded. And you could either glue them together just as they are without having any pockets. You could also make a slit in the top or the right of your envelope and just cut that open to make a pocket. I'm going to make these so that some of them have pockets on the top edge. For example, for the first one, I will do that. So I'm going to take some regular PVA glue and just glue on these three sides for the first page. So we have a pocket up here now. Then we have our first double page. Then we'll take the second full envelope and we'll glue these two together. This time I'm going to glue all around because I don't want a pocket here. So you can vary this as you like. You can have side pockets, top pockets, no pockets. And we'll just continue gluing these back to back. The next one here, I'll do a top pocket again. So I'll just glue the three edges. The next one I will glue completely, no pocket. The next one will get a pocket again on the top. And finally, the last one does not have a pocket. 
So this last one is again our half envelope that we cut apart. And the nice thing is this lays completely flat. I was not expecting that. So now we have one, two, three, four. Oops, There's some glue, five double pages and we have the back and the front. Before we move on, let me introduce you to the downloads I've selected from the Digital Collage Club for this fun endeavor. For those who may be new here, the Digital Collage Club is an exclusive membership-based website offering a vast collection of royalty-free digital craft supplies. When you sign up for either a yearly or a lifetime membership, you gain instant access to a treasure trove of unique images and resources. Every week, new images are added, providing you with fresh inspiration. The best part is you can even sell the craft items you create using these images. You can choose between a one-year membership or a lifetime membership. With the lifetime option, you pay once and gain unlimited access to all the images and tutorials for a lifetime. In the video description box below, you'll find discount codes for both membership types. I want to mention that if you use these links and codes, I receive a commission, which greatly supports my small creative business. Thank you so much if you decide to sign up or have already joined in the past using my link. Just a reminder, to receive the discounts, be sure to use the provided link. Thank you for considering the Digital Collage Club and supporting my creative journey. So then I printed these pages. These are from the Forest Trip Decoupage papers. And I printed these two on one page. And then I shrank that down to 55%. And that way I get a size that is perfect for our envelopes. And since this kit only has eight pages, but I need 12 to fill all the pages because we have 10 inside and we also have the front and the back. So I need four more images and I didn't want to double these. So I printed some of these pages from the Forest Friends Journal kit and I printed these at 110% because I think this will be a good size to get similar squares. So I'm just going to choose four more pages that will look nice as a journal page. So I think this one is very cute. So I'll just mark where I have to cut the paper to be the same size. So that's one page. Then I really like this one here. So that will be my next page. Then I also really like, like this one here with the mushrooms. So I need one more. I think I'll take this one here. So I'll go ahead and cut out those four pages. Okay, so these four are ready to go as well. So now in total I have 12 pages. And now I just need to decide which page will go on which envelope page. I want this for the cover. And I need to decide what to put on the back side. Maybe these mushrooms. No, actually, I'll put this one. I'll put this one on the back. More neutral one. Even though this little journal lays absolutely flat and I'm not planning on adding any bulky ephemera, I do want it to have a closure just because I think it looks nice. So I want to add this strip of Tim Holtz fabric. This is from the London Gridlock fabric. And I want to just put this underneath wrap that around like that 
but I have a feeling these cover pages are too flimsy to support that because I'm afraid the paper would start tearing over time. So I'm going to back the front and back papers with some cardstock. I have some 200 GSM cardstock here. So I will just glue those on there and cut that out. So now these are much more sturdy and I feel a lot better about putting them on the covers. So now I can go ahead and glue down this piece of fabric. And then I also want to cut a strip of fabric for my spine because I want to cover this here. I'm going to take this one, which is a Tim Holtz fabric called Subway Signs. So I'll just put this around and have about, what is this, one and a half centimeters maybe around the spine that will be covered like this with our panel. And I want to make this just a tiny bit taller than my envelope. So I will glue this down as well. This time I'll use a brush. I should have done that before. I was just being lazy. So I just thinned down some textile glue. As always, you can use PVA glue thinned down a little bit as well and I recently got the question what do I do with my brush full of glue how do I clean it so I just keep it in a jar of water and then when I'm done with the project I will just rinse it with regular hand soap so we have our spine and now we can adhere the front and the back panel. Double check that our pockets are on the top and not on the bottom. Yep, that is good. In the meantime, I have taken these to my sewing machine and I have stitched around each one of these images with a running stitch with black thread. And as you can see, I left the ends long and I alternated between leaving them on the top and leaving them on the bottom. And now it's just a matter of gluing these onto our spreads. And for this, I'm going to use my Kolal glue, which I have in this Beacon 3-in-1 bottle. Kolal and Beacon 3-in-1 are exactly the same thing, but Kolal glue is cheaper in Austria, probably in most of European countries. I don't know about the rest of the world. They have the same ingredients. They have the same strong smell. They are acid-free, waterproof, and not water-based meaning they will not make our papers wavy when we use the glue. And if you're unsure about what glue to use for which purpose, I will link a video for you below where I show you my favorite glues and how I use them for junk journaling. So I'm just going to put it on the edges. And if any of it squishes out, I can just rub it away with a piece of cloth. That way I won't have any shine. So it's still nice and flat. I love that. And since the glue is not completely dry yet, and I want to make sure that these pages, they don't stick together. So the problem is when you have the sewing, obviously you have a lot of tiny holes through which the glue can seep. So I'm going to let this dry 
like this to make sure the pages will not stick together. So once the glue has dried thoroughly, I can be sure my pages are not going to stick to each other. And now I want to add a little bit more character to these pages, starting with the cover. And I'm going to do that with stencils and with stamps. I'm going to start off with this leaf stencil. This one is from Action. I bought this last year sometime. I don't think they have this anymore. So let me just put some paper underneath. And I want some of the leaves coming from underneath. And I will be adding a few more things here on the cover. And since I want to spray through this with my Golden Ice Ink Dye Spray by Seth Apter, the challenge with spraying through a stencil is, of course, always that you cannot select which parts of the stencil you want. So I'm going to cover up the parts that I don't want showing, just with some masking tape. And that will also help it stay in place, so that's good. Yep, not bad. And we can use this other part maybe on another page before it dries. But first I need to dry this quickly with my heat gun. So where do we put this? Maybe on this one. And on the back side, I want to add some gold as well. I'll use this stencil, Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous THS 143. This time I'll just spray through it. Gorgeous! <laughs> Let's try this. And let's find a page where we can add the reverse image. How about here? Then I want to add some stamping. On this one here, I want to add this bird here, which is from the Stampers Anonymous Tim Holtz set Nature's Moments CMS 001. So this was the first one ever created by Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. And I don't know if this is available. I was gifted this by my dear, dear friend, Louisa Heinzel. So I don't know how available this is. I think she struggled getting this. And since I want to stick with the gold theme, I'm going to use some gold embossing powder. So I'll use my embossing dabber. You can also use embossing ink pad, of course, or a pen if you have one. I have the feeling this is the juiciest and it's important to store this on its head so that the glycerin can flow into the little sponge on the bottom. Fingers crossed, this will be nice. <laughs> oh yeah, I think that will be just fine. It's magic. <laughs> okay, let's put maybe something here. Maybe one of these plants, I think this one. When I use these embossing dabbers, I do clean my stamps afterwards. I wouldn't if I just would use archival ink, for example. But this stuff is kind of sticky. And if you don't have embossing powder, you can just do regular stamping, maybe with different colors. I'm sure that would look nice as well. Gorgeous. 
In fact, let's do that. Let's add some stamping. I'm going to take these from Carabelle Studio. That's a French company. And the number of these stamps is SA60651. And I'll use this bigger one. Let's put it on a stamping plate. And I'm going to use Distress Oxide Brushed Corduroy. If you don't have Distress Oxides or inks, you can also use acrylic paints, for example. And I'm adding just a little bit of water because I don't want a perfect print. I want more like a watercolory effect. Kind of looks like that always was on the page, doesn't it? <laughs> and I'm also going to add this little stamp right here in a different color. Let's take one that's a little bit darker. So I'll try the ice spruce. I think that goes really well with the image here that kind of balances the two pages out a little bit. Let's go back to this page here. And let's take something from one of my most favorite sets. Again, Stampers Anonymous and Tim Holtz. It's called Faded Type and has the number CMS397. And I'm going to use these numbers. And this time I'll use Ground Espresso. Ooh, that is quite smeared, but that's the effect I want. I want it to be really grungy. And we can also see the oxide effect here. You see where it's getting gray? That is the oxide effect. For this page right here, I'm going to use this script, same stamp set. And I'm going to use Rusty Hinge because I think that one will work well with the mushroom over here. Oh yeah. This page is quite busy, but at the same time, it looks too plain for me. So I am going to stamp right over that with this stamp from the same set. And I'm going to use Rusty Hinge because I think this will be light enough to still see the images through and it will pick up some of the colors that we have on the opposite page. I'll do something similar on this page using this one and brushed corduroy. I'm just going to do a partial print on this. Oh yeah, I like it. Let's add some more here. Yep. Once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> so I'm going to use this one on this page. I'm not sure how well that's going to show up. I'll use iced spruce. Yep, not bad. Almost looks green there, which is perfect for this page. So next I want to continue working on this cover page. So I printed this image out again on 200 GSM cardstock and then I glued it on to two more pieces of 200 GSM cardstock. So we have a nice thick piece now. I've cut it out, I've inked it up and this will fit right over the other one because I wanted this to be more dimensional. And I also want him to stand out even more. So I'm going to add some clear embossing powder on top. So again, I'll use my embossing dabber. You could also add a clear varnish if you don't have any embossing tools or even a shiny Mod Podge or something like that. I'm going to add another coat. 
So it has cooled off. We have two layers. And you see this texture that we have? That's because I dabbed the dabber. And instead of just swiping over the owl, I do like this texture. So that's going to go here. And I want to add him a little bit raised. So I'm going to use some foam tape underneath. And if you don't have foam tape, you can just glue some pieces of cardboard underneath. And I also want to add some more texture. So I think I'll use some of this. This is netting from, I think it was potatoes <laughs> from my supermarket. And I dyed this with Distress Oxide. I think this was a bright yellow, meaning it, would, it was probably from lemons. <laughs> In any case, let's take a piece off. And I also thought since there's this branch here, I have this little twig that I found on a walk and it has actually, look, it has the same shape here. <laughs> How cool. So I have to include that obviously. That needs to go on top. And I'm not sure if the net goes on top or where does that go? No, that goes underneath. Yeah, I think that goes underneath, but on top of the owl. So let's start by putting the owl on. And these are quite dimensional. I think I'll take some smaller ones. Uh, not smaller. I mean, they're also smaller, but they're not quite as high. So let's add our net. And I think we need to break off the twig here. Okay, perfect. Yes. This definitely needs some clamping down. That's too short. <laughs> Let's bring in the heavy guns. Okay, that's not going anywhere. <laughs> so I'm going to let this dry. So this is what it looks like once it's dry and it's stuck down super well, like this is not moving. And now I want to make my cards that will go in here. So I have three pockets and now you can also see why I wanted to ink up those insides because you will see the edges of those inside pockets. I didn't want white showing on the edges there. And I want to play with some mixed media. So I'm going to take out my new media mat by Tim Holtz. This was gifted to me by Sweet Louisa. And if you want to see the unboxing of this and a few other goodies, you can watch the video linked below. We had so much fun with this very unplanned unboxing together. So I have cut three pieces of watercolor paper and I want to play around with some background techniques using Distress Mica sprays. So these are currently all the colors I have. And I think they will work for this project. And I am going to wear some gloves. <laughs> so I'll do all three at the same time because I want them to have similar colors. I have already kind of mixed these up. So you always want to be sure that the pigment down here and the mica powder have mixed up. These have a metal ball in them, which helps them mix them. So I have already had them laying on their sides to help with the mixing process. I have just watched Tim Holtz's live demo with the Christmas release of the new mica stains. So let's see if I can put some of this into practice. So I'm going to spritz the backgrounds just a tiny bit to help the stains move. And then let's add some Wicked Elixir. 
And in the end, I'm going to cover the middle part. So we're actually only going to see the outside. Then let's add some fortune teller, which is this beautiful purple. I'm going to add some more water to help it move. And then I'll just move these around. There is a lot of purple happening. Okay, I'm going to dry these before I continue adding more colors and I'll try to take away some of the color here on the edge because I don't want those lines on the edge. Okay, I'll continue drying. The camera is picking up the shine a little bit. <laughs> okay, I want to try what Tim was doing in his live where he was taking his bottle and then just spraying trying to get those big drops by not pushing the lever all the way okay i'm just doing it for the one and then we'll take a paper towel and take some of that pigment off oh yeah oh yeah it's working it's too bad we'll be covering up most of this background you see those spots oh that is so cool back is a catastrophe but we'll be covering that up <laughs> i'm gonna do that for these two as well that looks amazing beautiful okay let's wipe some of this off okay i do have some more here so let me add some water to that and try to pick that up Add some more grunge so we can dry that again. Super grungy. I'm going to get rid of the rest of this here. So I think I want some of this burning ember. It's a beautiful copper tone. Mm, I'll just concentrate on the edges because that's what we'll be seeing in the end. So I'll add a little bit of water around the edges. Wow. And then I'll dry it. I don't think I'll add any more water. I don't even want it to move. I'm just going to dry them as they are. Wow. These look absolutely amazing. I am in awe, but I do want a little bit more green showing on the edges as well because we can't actually see any of that hardly except here. So again, I'll add a little bit of water. And again, I'll just dry this as it is. Look at these results. I am totally in awe. This is just absolutely amazing wow okay and since i have so much goodness left i'm going to just add some water and take some more watercolor paper wet it and just see what happens because that would be a waste yeah it's kind of turning into mud but that's okay <laughs> we'll just go with it What does Tim always say? You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. <laughs> you could always add, of course. Like some purple. Yeah, look at that. Wow. This is going to be a never ending story, I think. <laughs> How do you ever stop once you start? I don't know. So I cleaned up all the mess. These are our byproducts, you could say. These are the ones I did at the end just to mop up these stains. And these are 
are actual three cards i'm so in love with these oh my goodness Okay, let's see if I still want to do what I had planned because covering all this up is really going to be hard. But my plan was to take some of these. So I printed the journaling pages four per sheet. So that gave me basically 25% of the actual size. And I want to choose three of these to put on the front of these cards. And I was thinking about this one, this one, and then I'm torn between these two, but I think I'll take this green one as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these out. So I cut them out and now let's add them and see how they look. Oh my goodness. <gasps> wow. Okay, this is awesome. I think they go really well. I think it really makes the cards come out, but now I'm wondering, should we add some mica stain stenciling a little bit as well? Or will we ruin our cards? Hmm. Okay, I have to try this. I'm just too curious. Gloves are back on. <laughs> and I'm going to try it with this stencil by Studio Light. It's actually a grunge mask. Uh, let's try it with this one. Add a paper towel and I think I also want to mask part of this off so I'll just cover the deer like that and then I'll do it like this mm, would it make more sense to maybe use a stencil instead of a mask so a mask is the reverse of a stencil so basically this is a stencil and this is a mask do you see the difference <laughs> It's hard to explain. This here is basically what you would get if you would take out all the inside parts of a stencil. And we'll use Wicked Elixir because that will be the most subtle, I think. Oh, and by the way, I also wiped all the nozzles with my cloth after I used them to prevent them from getting clogged up as much as possible. Let's do this. Oh, and I should have a place to put this, right? Should we find a place in our journal? Should we just be brave and do a little more grunging up? Which one, which one do we grunge up? How about this one? There's nothing yet on this page. So I'm going to take this off. Let's move that over. And let's add this here. Hmm. Okay, we can't see a lot of that, but that's okay because it doesn't really disturb this, so I didn't ruin anything at least. <laughs> okay, let's have a look at our image. Okay, it is very subtle, but it's there. It has the shine. That's not bad at all. Shall we be a little more bold with this one and try a different color? Oh, this is so nerve-wracking. <laughs> Shall we go with the purple? Ooh. Okay, masking this part off. Maybe just on the edge. Okay, not sure about this line here. And do we dare put this somewhere? This is going to show up. I think quite dark. Let's just do it. Oh, I love that. Let's add some more down here. Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah, that's it. Love that. Let's add a tiny bit here. Okay, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> so for this last one, I'm going to use the Burning Ember. And this time I won't mask anything off, off because I don't want that harsh line. Mm-hmm, that's better, much better. And can we quickly find something for this? Actually, I'm going to have to add a little bit more of that now because this way it looks like I unintentionally made a mess. <laughs> Maybe I can reactivate some of this because it's already dry now. Let's put this 
signed. Maybe I can reactivate it with some water. And then let's try that again. Oh my goodness, I don't want to ruin it now. Yeah, that worked. Yes! Okay, I'm not loving this one. So I'll put this one aside and instead I'll use this one here. And this time I'll do it like I did with this one. I'm not going to mask anything off and I'll use the burning ember again. Oh yeah, I like this a lot better. This here needs some color. Let's add some water to that. Wow. <laughs> that was a lot. I think we need a third one up here. Rule of threes and all. Wow, this is really turning very grungy. <laughs> I want to turn these into tag shapes. So I'm going to turn this around and I have this tag die. I'm just going, because I want all the corners to be the same, I'll just do it like this. And I'll do that for all of them and I'll also do the same angle on these. In theory, they should then line up nicely. Let's try it with one before I do it for all of them. That works. So I just need to then ink up these and I'll ink up these edges as well. And then I'll also back them with something because this doesn't work for me. <laughs> Okay, they're all done. So as you can see, I've added a fabric tab on the top. This is the same fabric I used on the spine here, which is the Tim Holtz Subway Signs fabric. So I just stitched that on with messy stitching on the top. Then I stitched around the whole tag and then I backed it with coffee dyed paper. And now these can go into our booklet. One. Two. And three. And finally, I'm going to add some sentiments inside so that this will become more of like maybe a storybook or just a book with different sentiments to give it more interest. So this is a little booklet I got from, again, Studio Light. It's a Dutch company. I will link their website below for you. They have a lot of fun products. And I'll just go through these off camera. They have letters in here as well, so you can spell your own words. And they have all kinds of different sentiments here, different backgrounds, different font. I think it's a lot of fun. So I'll show you the final version once I have these in. So here's the final flip through. I think the quotes really added the perfect final touch because now it's kind of like a storybook. So life is a journey and only you hold the key. Think happy, be happy. Happiness is not out there, it's in you. I love this one. On this I didn't put anything because we have so many words there, but on this one it says, don't be afraid to try. I thought that was very fitting, especially for this page because I was not sure about this at all, but I tried and I'm so happy with it. 
Art speaks where words are unable to explain. Faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase and make your own magic. And then I just tie it here with a simple knot. So make your own magic and have fun with these papers. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.